The lost cosmonauts or phantom cosmonauts are subjects of a conspiracy theory alleging that Soviet cosmonauts went to outer space before Yuri Gagarin, but their existence has never been publicly acknowledged by either the Soviet or Russian space authorities. Proponents of the lost cosmonauts theory argue that the Soviet Union attempted to launch two or more manned space flights prior to Gagarin's, and that at least two cosmonauts died in those attempts. Another cosmonaut, Vladimir Ilyushin, is believed to have landed off course and been held by the Chinese government. The government of the Soviet Union supposedly suppressed this information, to prevent bad publicity during the height of the Cold War. The evidence cited to support lost cosmonaut theories is generally regarded as inconclusive, and several cases have been confirmed as hoaxes. In the 1980s, American journalist James Oberg researched space-related disasters in the Soviet Union, but found no evidence of these lost cosmonauts. Since the fall of the Soviet Union in the early 1990s, much previously restricted information is now available, including on Valentin Bondarenko, a would-be cosmonaut whose death during training on Earth was covered up by the Soviet government. Even with the availability of published Soviet archival material and memoirs of Russian space pioneers, no evidence has emerged to support the lost cosmonaut theories. Topic. Allegations Topic. Purported Czech information leak In December 1959, an alleged high-ranking Czech communist leaked information about many purported unofficial space shots. Alexei Ledovsky was mentioned as being launched inside a converted R-5A rocket. Three more names of alleged cosmonauts claimed to have perished under similar circumstances were Andrei Mitkov, Sergei Shiborin and Maria Gromova. Also in 1959, pioneering space theoretician Hermann Oberth claimed that a pilot had been killed on a suborbital ballistic flight from Kapustin Yar in early 1958. He provided no source for the story. In December 1959, the Italian news agency Continentale repeated the claims that a series of cosmonaut deaths on suborbital flights had been revealed by a high ranking Czech communist. Continental identified the cosmonauts as Alexei Ladowski, Serenti Shryborin, Andrzej Mitkow, and Maria Gromov. No other evidence of Soviet sub-orbital manned flights ever came to light. <laughs> <laughs> High-altitude equipment tests A 1959 edition of Ogoniak published an article and photos of three high-altitude parachutists, Colonel Pyotr Dolgov, Ivan Kacher and Alexei Grachov. Official records state that Dolgov was killed on November 1, 1962, while carrying out a high-altitude parachute jump from a Volga balloon gondola. Dolgov jumped at an altitude of 28,640 meters (93,970 feet). The helmet visor of Dolgov's Sokol pressure suit hit part of the gondola as he exited, depressurizing the suit and killing him. Catcher is known to have disappeared around this time. His name has become linked to this equipment. Grachov is thought to have been involved, with Dolgov and Kacher, in testing the high-altitude equipment. Russian journalist Yaroslav Golovanov suggested that high-altitude testing was exaggerated into a story that those parachutists died on a space flight. In late 1959, Ogoniak carried pictures of a man identified as Gennady Zavadovsky testing high-altitude equipment, perhaps with Grachov and others. Zavadovsky would later appear on lists of dead cosmonauts, without a date of death or accident description. Russian journalist Yaroslav Golovanov, who researched the lost cosmonaut claims in his book, Cosmonaut No. 1, 
found and interviewed the real Alexei Timofeyevich Belikanov, a retired high-altitude parachutist. In this interview, Belikanov revealed more about his colleagues Dolgov, Kachar, Mikhailov, Grachov, Zavadovsky and Ilyushin, and confirmed they never flew to space. According to Belikanov, in 1963, after New York Journal American published an article on lost cosmonauts, listing the parachutists among them, Soviet newspapers Izvestia and Krasnaya Zvezda published a refutation that included testimonies and photographs of the actual parachutists Belikanov, Kachar, Grichov and Zavadovsky. The parachutists also wrote an angry letter to New York Journal American editor William Randolph Hearst, Jr., which he ignored. <laughs> Robert Heinlein In 1960, science fiction author Robert A. Heinlein wrote in his article Pravda Means Truth reprinted in Expanded Universe that on May 15, 1960, while traveling in Vilnius, in the Soviet Lithuania, he was told by Red Army cadets that the Soviet Union had launched a man into orbit that day, but that later the same day it was denied by officials. Heinlein speculated that Korobol Sputnik 1 was an orbital launch, later said to be unmanned, and that the retro rockets had fired in the wrong attitude, making recovery efforts unsuccessful. According to Gagarin's biography, these rumors were likely started as a result of two Vostok missions equipped with dummies Ivan Ivanovich and human voice tape recordings to test if the radio worked that were made just prior to Gagarin's flight. In a U.S. press conference, on February 23, 1962, call. Barney Oldfield revealed that an unmanned space capsule had indeed been orbiting the Earth since 1960, as it had become jammed into its booster rocket. According to the NASA NSSDC Master Catalog, Korobol Sputnik 1, designated at the time 1KP or Vostok 1P, did launch on May 15, 1960, one year before Gagarin. It was a prototype of the later Zenit and Vostok manned launchers. The onboard TDU braking engine unit had ordered the retro rockets to fire to recover, but due to a malfunction of the attitude control system, the spacecraft was oriented upside down, and the firing put the craft into a higher orbit. The re-entry capsule lacked a heat shield as there were no plans to recover it. Engineers had planned to use the vessel's telemetry data to determine if the guidance system had functioned correctly, so recovery was unnecessary. The Torre Burt recordings The Judica Cordelia brothers are two former amateur radio operators who made audio recordings at Torre Bert that allegedly support the conspiracy theory that the Soviet space program covered up cosmonaut deaths in the 1960s. The pair claimed to have recorded audio of several secret Soviet space missions that ended in calamity and mystery. This has generated public interest for more than 50 years, despite a considerable number of detailed rebuttals of the brothers' claims. <inaudible> <inaudible> Vladimir Ilyushin Vladimir Ilyushin, son of Soviet airplane designer Sergei Ilyushin, was a Soviet pilot and is purported to have been a cosmonaut, alleged by some to have actually been the first man in space on April 7, 1961. An honor generally attributed to Yuri Gagarin on April 12, 1961. The theories surrounding this alleged orbital flight are that a failure aboard the spacecraft caused controllers to bring the descending capsule down several orbits earlier than intended, resulting in its landing in the People's Republic of China. The pilot was then supposedly held by Chinese authorities for a year before being returned to the Soviet Union. The international embarrassment that would have resulted from such an incident is cited as the Soviets' reason for not publicizing this flight. 
They reportedly focused their publicizing efforts on the subsequent successful flight of Yuri Gagarin instead, however, there are reasons to disbelieve this allegation. Although both were communist states, relations between the Soviet Union and China were strained. The propaganda value of a Soviet pilot captured flying over Chinese territory would have given little reason for Chinese authorities to cooperate in a cover-up. Also, bringing the capsule down several orbits earlier than intended does not make sense, considering the fact that the Vostok 1 mission involved a single orbit. This theory originated on April 10, 1961 with Denis Ogden, the Moscow correspondent of the British communist newspaper Daily Worker, and was actually based on Ilyushin's medical treatment and care in China. According to many Soviet sources, and to the article in Komsomolskaya Pravda dated July 11, 2005, Ilyushin was a famous test pilot but he was never involved in the space program. On June 5, 1960, his legs were seriously injured in a car accident. Ilyushin underwent medical treatment for a year in Moscow, then was sent to Hangzhou, China, for rehabilitation under specialists in traditional Chinese medicine. This explanation was also confirmed by the Soviet defector Leonid Vladimirov, an engineer who had personal contacts with Ilyushin in 1960. In his 1973 book The Russian Space Bluff, published in Frankfurt, Russian translation of the book. Vladimir Ilyushin denied this theory, dying in 2010. Topic: <inaudible> Moon shot allegations. The Soviet Union lost the manned moon landing phase of the moon race to the United States. However, some sources claim that just before the historic Apollo 11 flight to the moon, the Soviets undertook an adventurous attempt to beat the Americans. Despite the unsuccessful first test launch of the new Soviet N-1 rocket on January 20, 1969, it is alleged that a decision was made to send a manned Soyuz 7 KL-3 craft to the moon using an N-1. This attempt is alleged to have occurred on July 3, 1969, when it ended in an explosion, destroying the launch pad and killing the cosmonauts on board. Official sources state that the L-3 was not ready for manned missions. Its moon landing module, the LK, had been tested a few times but its orbiter, the 7K LOKE, had not been successfully tested by the closing of the moon landing program at the end of 1974. The closing of the program was officially denied and maintained top secret until 1989. This claim correlates with the late hoax about the unsuccessful moonshot flight of Andre McCoyan. However, in reality, the second launch, like the first, was a test of the booster and was therefore unmanned. Even if cosmonauts had been on board, they would have been rescued by its launch escape system, which carried the dummy payload to safety two kilometers from the pad. One mission in the Soyuz program, Soyuz T-10-1, did see the spacecraft and cosmonauts rescued safely from a failed booster rocket by its launch escape system. It was the only documented case of such a system in use with a manned spacecraft, until the 11th of October 2018 Soyuz launch mishap. There are also rumors, which appeared later in Oman Ra, a novel by Russian fiction writer Pelevin, that the Soviet automatic sample return craft Luna and remote-controlled automatic moon rover Lunokhod, were, due to failures in automation, manned by cosmonauts who had agreed to take part in suicide missions. However, there is not enough space in either the Luna or Lunokhod for even one cosmonaut, even excluding life support system space. There had been a plan to develop modified Lunokids with additional controls for use as a transport in manned moon landing missions, but this plan ended with the moon landing program. Among the Lunas, a June 14, 1969 test failed to launch, and a July 13, 1969 test, Luna 15, launched but failed to land on the moon. 
Among the rovers, there was a failed launch on February 19, 1969 and two unsuccessful launches on November 10, 1970 and January 8, 1973. Confirmed hoaxes A number of claims have been confirmed as hoaxes. Topic. Ivan Istochnikov Officially Soyuz 2 was an unmanned spacecraft that was the docking target for Soyuz 3. However, Mike Arena, an American journalist, allegedly found in 1993 that an Ivan Istochnikov and his dog Kloka, who were manning Soyuz 2, disappeared on October 26, 1968, with signs of having been hit by a meteorite. They had been erased from history by the Soviet authorities, who could not tolerate such a failure, the entire story was found to be a hoax perpetrated by Joan Fontcuberta as a modern art exercise that included falsified mission artifacts, various digitally manipulated images, and immensely detailed feature-length biographies that turned out to be riddled with hundreds of historical as well as technical errors. The exhibit was shown in Madrid in 1997 and the National Museum of Catalan Art in 1998. Brown University later purchased several articles, and put them on display themselves. Mexico's Luna Cornea magazine however, failed to notice this, and ran issue number 14 January, April 1998 with photos, and a story explaining the truth. The name. Ivan Istochnikov is a Russian translation of Joan Fontcuberta's name, in specific, Joan and Ivan both translate to John and Fontcuberta and Istochnikov both mean hidden fountain. On June 11, 2006, Cuarto Milenio, a mysteries program led by Iker Jimenez on the Spanish TV channel Cuatro, presented the story as possibly true. There is an entry in the Spanish skeptical blog Magonia by the journalist Luis Alfonso Gómez. An excerpt from Cuarto Milenio is included. Topic. Pavel Popovich and Vitaly Sevastyanov NASA Radio Monitoring Service intercepted conversations between Pavel Popovich and Vitaly Sevastyanov and a control center. The conversations appear to originate from a Soviet Zond-6 spacecraft that was launched on November 10, 1968, and successfully flew for seven days around the Moon. This was at a time of intense competition during the moon flyby phase of the moon race between the USSR and the US. The Soviet L-1, Zond spacecraft was almost ready for manned missions, although testing was not yet complete, and it was not unimaginable that the USSR might undertake a manned flyby using the L-1, Zond spacecraft in order to beat the Americans. It was soon clear, however, that these were test transmissions between two ground control control centers with the Zond 6 intercepting and relaying the transmissions. After the successful U.S. Apollo 8 manned flight around the Moon, the Soviet manned flyby missions lost political urgency. The first manned flight of L-1, Zond spacecraft with Alexei Leonov and Valery Bikovsky planned for the end of 1968 was cancelled and Zond spacecraft made only a few unmanned, automatic flights after that. Topic. Andre McCoyan Andre McCoyan was reportedly killed together with a second crew member in an attempt to reach the moon ahead of the Americans in early 1969. Due to system malfunction, they failed to get into lunar orbit and shot past the moon. This story, which circulated in 2000, may have been based on the plot of an episode of the television series The Cape. The episode, Buried in Peace, 
first aired on October 28, 1996. In it, a space shuttle crew on a mission to repair a communications satellite encounters a derelict Soviet spacecraft with a dead crew. The result of a secret attempt to beat the United States to the moon in the 1960s. Tom Nowicki played Major Andrei McCoyan, a Russian member of the Space Shuttle crew in the story. This story correlates with another claim about the unsuccessful second manned test flight of the N 1 rocket. Topic in popular culture The May 1987 issue No. 121 page 74 of Dragon Magazine features Operation, Zodiac, an article by Merle M. Rasmussen, creator of the top-secret role-playing game, Jackie Rasmussen and Roger E. Moore, a follow-on to Operation, Zenith which appeared in issue 120, this includes the scenario, code name, Cancer, wherein a space Space Shuttle crew is sent to rendezvous with a Soviet Cosmos satellite launched in 1963. They discover that the satellite was in fact a modified Vostok designed to deliver a nuclear payload. The cosmonaut aboard died when his life support system was exhausted following a launch into a higher than planned orbit. The July 1987 issue number 123, page 82 to 6 of Dragon Magazine features the article Operation Zondraker Part 2, also by Rasmussen, which includes the scenario code name Starfall, wherein a team of agents explores the site of the failed Luna 15 lander, discovering that it was a manned mission with two cosmonauts. One died instantly in the crash, identified as Nikolai L. Kuz while the other, unidentified, cosmonaut died later as his oxygen supply ran out. A 1989 installment of Philip Bond's Wired World, published in the UK comics anthology Deadline magazine, features a cosmonaut who crash lands in a London park where the main characters are picnicking. Viktor Pelevin's anti-Soviet 1992 novel Oman Ra is based on depictions of Soviet space flights as a planned homicide. Some of these flights are also not really flights, but fakes for the sake of Soviet propaganda. On page 7 of the September 21, 1993 issue of the U.S. tabloid Sun, Mike Jones authored an article titled Lost in Space, describing several cosmonaut deaths in space according to government spokesman Igor Ivanov. In 1988, five years earlier, cosmonaut Nikolai Gogolansky died in his failed space suit during an EVA in which his mooring line failed, which sparked eight unsuccessful attempts to retrieve the body nearly causing Vasily Bordonsky to perish also due to a mooring line break, while an unnamed NASA spokesman states U.S. shuttle mission astronauts have noticed Gogolansky's body during several missions with no attempt to recover it due to risks and cost. Two cosmonauts died during a 1968 launch, another cosmonaut died when their capsule exploded on impact as it was returning to Earth, three cosmonauts were killed in 1981 when their spacesuits were pierced by space debris during space walks, and four cosmonauts died due to a faulty air lock in 1984, prompting a second docking mission two months later to recover the dead. The 2002 movie K-19, The Widowmaker features a scene in which the ship's executive officer recites an anecdote regarding the rumors of a cosmonaut who went to space before Yuri Gagarin, but due to the mission's disastrous luck, the mission was covered up and the cosmonaut was made to disappear as if he never existed at all. The 2004 video game Metal Gear Solid 3, Snake Eater has a boss known as the Fury who was a cosmonaut sent into space before Gagarin, and whose shuttle was engulfed in flames upon re-entry. He survived with severe burns and a newly found sense of pyromania, his boss fight consequently involves the use of fire. The 2005 mockumentary First on the Moon describes the preparations and training for a Soviet moonshot in 1938, as well as the following cover-up. The 2007 Jed Mercurio novel Ascent features a cosmonaut who makes a successful, albeit suicidal, moon landing ahead of the Apollo landings. 
In 2010 the Canadian band Wolf Parade released a song titled Yulia, which lead singer Dan Bochner confirmed in an interview as recounting a lost cosmonaut. The 2011 science fiction, horror film Apollo 18, which depicts a secret lunar mission by NASA in 1974, depicts astronauts discovering a Soviet cosmonaut who was killed by spider-like aliens hidden on the Moon along with a LK landing module. The 2013 Spanish science fiction feature film The Cosmonaut is inspired by accounts of lost cosmonauts. A 2013 Doctor Who comic book by IDW Publishing features the story, Space Oddity, which depicts a secret two-man mission in 1965. The Vashta Narada kill one of the cosmonauts, but the 11th Doctor rescues the other, Alexei Leonov, who then blackmails Soviet authorities into ending off the book's space missions. In 2013 the synthwave artist Simulacrum Lab released a vinyl and CD album containing two songs inspired by Lost Cosmonauts, titled, Lost Cosmonauts, a radio transmission fiction, and Far Worlds, sung by Liz Enthusiasm. The 2014 science fiction, horror novel The Burning Dark by Adam Christopher, set in a distant space station in the 30th century, is inspired in part by accounts of the lost cosmonauts. Michael Cassutt's book Red Moon features a cosmonaut named Shiborin who flew on two space flights. One of the early lost cosmonaut stories was of an ill fated suborbital mission in 1958 prior to Gagarin's flight, supposedly crewed by a Sorrenti Shiborin. The 2018 Hungarian film satire Lajko Sagani as Urban is set in a fictional secret Baikonur training camp where four expendable candidates, who are considered as unwanted elements by the Soviet state, are competing to be the first human cosmonaut. The winner would be used as a live crash test dummy to see if they can survive before letting Gagarin safely go out into space. Gagarin and Brezhnev, who appear as important supporting characters, are both portrayed satirically in the film. Topic. See also List of spaceflight-related accidents and incidents Moon landing conspiracy theories, similar theories surrounding the American lunar program under NASA Soviet manned lunar programs, the USSR's plans to send a mission to the moon.